A great example of this technology, this is not a case that you're going to see, but you're going to remember this case or you're going to think about some time where you're dealing with either some type of infection or somebody you and your family is dealing with some type of infection, and then you're going to remember this. But this is a story, the New York Times says the first DNA finds the root of illness. So this 14-year-old boy goes with his family to the Caribbean, they, he goes swimming, and he comes back to Madison, Wisconsin, and he gets, has headaches, and he's in the ER multiple times. He finally ends up in the ICU and they're drilling holes in his skull to relieve the pressure from the inflammation. All his cultures are negative, they can't figure out what's going on, and of course you can imagine, I have, a, I have three kids and I have a 15 year old, and I can only imagine him being in a situation, you're telling the docs to throw everything but the kitchen sink at him, in terms of antibiotics, antifungals, everything to save his life. He's going to die, and the parents are ready to, to come to terms with that, and the doctors say we have one more thing we want to try. We're going to take some cerebral spinal fluid and we're going to send it to a lab in California, a research lab, Lawrence Livermore Labs. They can do next-gen sequencing, but they're not set up to do massive samples and they're not clap and clear to, to take your samples, but they can do next-gen sequencing and it's primarily a for research tool. But they sent it out there and lo and behold, they found the species. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine and it talked about how next generation sequencing, it said had a dramatic effect. Well, it saved his life because the cultures couldn't identify it. When they got the results back, the species was Leptospirea. For those of you who know Leptospirea, the antibiotic that you need to kill Leptospirea, anybody who don't know? Guess? High dose Pen G. The last antibiotic you're probably going to put a sick person on in the ICU. But once they stopped everything else and put him on high dose Pen G, it saved his life. So again, diagnose and treat. Your treatment decisions are only as good as your diagnostic information. So the better your diagnostic information, the better your treatment decisions. So they didn't know what they were up against, so they were throwing everything at it. Once they identified it, they saved his life. This is not a, a, a podiatry example, but I think it's a really interesting case to show you. Again, I showed you the 14-year-old in the ICU. Um, a lot of males in the room, so if you ever get prostate infection, you'll remember this. So this gentleman had a prostate infection. He went to four urologists, and he had over 25 cultures in that time period. He also had other diagnostic uh, tools used, all trying to figure out what was causing his problem. Well, urologists tell me that they, whenever they send semen or they do a massage and send urine off to the culture lab, what do they get back? Nothing, no growth. <laughs> so what do they do? They put you on an antibiotic that has high tissue penetration into the prostate tissue. So you go on Cipro for six weeks or Bactrim for six weeks, and let's cross our fingers and hope you do well. This poor guy, four urologists, every urologist put him on a different antibiotic, he didn't get better. He finally showed up at Dr. Warner's office, and he said he sent some semen in to the lab, extracting, these are all the microbes that were in this guy's uh, semen or in his prostate, the dominant species, I don't know if you can see it back there, but it's Fingoldia magna. I don't know how often you see that in your culture reports, but that's an anaerobe. So he called the patient back and said, you've been on Cipro, doesn't kill anaerobes. You've been on Bactrim, doesn't kill anaerobes. Let's put you on clindamycin and see how you do. The guy came back a week later and gave him a big hug because for the first time he felt better. And he's, been, he's had subsequent tests and he's been clear and free and happy since.